Um, hi there. Um, yes, my name is Konstantin. I'd like to start with uh, just a question. Uh, please raise your hand if you heard about uh, succinct data structures before this conference. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, then I think uh, uh, how much... How, Someone of you, do you like to like play with data, play with data structures? Maybe it's interesting of you. Yes, that's that's fine. Um, so for me, uh, succinct data structures and Python in one sentence were like ridiculous thing just a few years ago. Uh, but thanks to CFFI and uh, Python advantages and uh, PyBind 11 and C++, actually, uh, we uh, have this talk today. Um, but let, let me start with a quick introduction and like uh, telling you who I am and how I end up exper experimenting with these data structures. Um, I work for Curator Labs. It's a networking company famous for being able to mitigate uh, denial of service attacks, distributed denial of service attacks, never showing the captures. And to do that, we have like two layers of things that are going on. One is online streaming algorithms filtering, and the second one where I do my job is like uh, processing data afterwards, experimenting, finding some patterns and so on to improve our filters. Um, and I found that 16 data structures may be uh, useful here. So what they are? Um, the most famous succinct data structure is bit vector. It's just uh, like, well, like usual vector, but with Boolean values. And in um, usual, in most programming languages, uh, one single Boolean value will have at least one byte in memory, uh, it, in often it even more. But actually, in this one byte, we can have eight different values for the Boolean, uh, eight different Boolean values. Uh, let's look how it fits the Python. <laughs> well, here we have like uh, 120 bytes per just seven array, seven array of seven elements, zeros and ones. Um, actually, it's not so bad because there is an overhead for list. We can extract this um, size of empty list and we'll still have uh, 56 elements here, and that's reasonable because it's one element uh, having eight bytes, it's, and this is just a byte, to, um, byte word in 64-bit uh, operating system. Um, but actually, uh, we can force Python to have one byte per element here, just using byte array or something like that, like array array type B, uh, but there is not, it's not a good enough, looks like, right? So we can have bit operations and like shifts and bit uh, ends, ors, and so on to set up all our values and to pack them into just one byte. And assume we have similar process to unpack it. It's okay. Um, but it kind of looks like it would be faster in C or in maybe it's in assembly. Because when, if you have not so small array of data, it would be like, well, painful to address like gigabytes uh, of data in this uh, menu. Um, and still, can we have even less space for this data? Uh, generally speaking, theoretically, if we don't know distribution and we have to assume it's random bits or just uniformly distributed, then no, but let's consider like this example we have the previous uh, pattern and repeating one uh, mega times. Uh, actually, it looks like we can simply uh, compress it with Zlib or something, but to access the last element of the resulting array compressed, we have to uncompress everything. And depending on what we use to compress it, we will have to actually uh, uncompress everything and maybe store it in memory that's not helping us. Uh, but um, there is need some, mm, but there are succinct data structures and they can do that. They can give us access to some elements in the, or all of them, uh, in, or 
some and or some operations on this array without decompressing it. So they are quite useful. So where the, mm, these 16 data structures may be used? Well, trees, basically, that's where I use them. Like, you're building the tree, and I'm, I will show you one where, where you have um, lots of elements, but not so much uh, leaves, for example, or, or, or not so much um, non-leaves, I'm sorry. Uh, these types of uh, trees could be, uh, um, for example, in feature, uh, they could be in feature learning, in machine learning, it could be a compact feature representation. These trees could be used in pattern discovery. There are lots of applications here. Uh, one of them is, for example, DNA analysis and indexing in databases and so on. So I took uh, SDSL library by Simon Gogg and 30 other contributors. It's a highly uh, compiled time parameterized C++ library. So we can't simply use it in Python with CFFI and even with PyBind 11, you will have to spend lots of time for, uh, to import it. Uh, but, um, but it highlights uh, lots of publications and it has uh, lots of things we can use. And still it's in GPL v3. Uh, so what I did is a subset of this library reported to Python. Uh, of course, it's interactive, and you can have doc strings and uh, completion in IPython and so on, and I release GIL where it's possible. Um, have, have you, any, any one of those of you uh, faced a thought or effect of um, generating C or C++ or maybe awesome code with Python? Uh, yeah. Quite a few. Um, but, well, what happens here is some sort of the reverse. Uh, we are using C++ and the process I'm calling PyStationate to manually instantiate uh, lots of templates and export them to Python. So basically, we use Python to generate, uh, we're using C++ templates to generate Python module. So let's start exploring the library. Uh, the first and biggest, probably, and the most interesting for beginners part is integer vectors. Well, they are usual integer vectors. Maybe not all the API are copied from Python lists, but they are work like more or less like would you expect. But they have bit compress function that will compress it to uh, in this example, to three, three bytes per element. So this uh, not so large array will have very small footprint in memory. Uh, well, there are two types of uh, these arrays in library, uh, one of one type and one class is a dynamic class where you can use bit compress and others, uh, are quite, quite a few of them don't. Uh, you can use uh, the last ones to, if you know overhead, overhand uh, if, uh, how much bits you need per element. Uh, and they have like one byte less uh, memory overhead. <laughs> so here's an example of using that. Uh, you may know that you, you can use uh, just a one array, a simple array to represent a tree. Uh, index here. Uh, of array is a kind of um, ID for the node, and value at that index is a parent ID for the node. So if you have not so much uh, leaves, but lots of uh, near root nodes, then you will not ever have large values here. And this means that you can have very compact representation for this tree. Okay. Uh, but what we, if we would like to get rid of this property of mutable and maybe uh, some kind of find a benefit of it? Uh, let's take an example of 10 mega values and array with um, repeating pattern. So it's 80 megabytes in Python and uh, those few bytes of overhead of list are just invisible here. 
And the same size will be in uh, our library, in my library, uh, without bit compression, but of course with bit compression we can have a little less, like 25 megabytes. But we can go further and we can apply self-delimiting -delim codes on deltas and we have array that is much, much smaller here and we can, you still can access every element. Um, and you can construct it faster if you use uh, integer vector from PySDSL. Well, uh, I'm, I tend to collect all the classes uh, in arrays and dictionaries, uh, so you may notice uh, integer vectors were in the dictionary and these ones are too, so you can kind of experiment with them. You can just take all the classes from some category and, and give, give it some data, measure how fast it would take, measure how uh, long would be, would take operations, and so on. So integer vectors uh, compressed with uh, variable codes is another option. You can have like, uh, mm, let's take a sparse array. So it's almost all, 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 all elements, all elements are zero except one. But this one is large. It's large, uh, it's so much, uh, it has so much uh, large value that it can't be a bit compressed because it still will require 64 bits. Here we can create a so-called VLC array uh, that will have just uh, one and a half megabytes and you still can have access and so on. Well, and again, I'll, I have these classes in a category and there are uh, you can do some kind of batch benchmarks or whatever. Just be, I would like to stress that different kinds of uh, classes will have different, kind, different kinds of data, will have beneficial uh, implementation with uh, different kinds of arrays. So just test it. Look what's best for you. Uh, and there are different kinds. I, I can't cover all of them, uh, but you can find them in such arrays and you can find doc strings for them and uh, experiments for experiment and all kinds of uh, integer uh, compressed arrays are here for your pleasure. <laughs> bit vectors is the next big, big part. Uh, it's a really big part. Of course, bit vector of uh, with one is just usual int vector and uh, of course, there are ways to compress it, not like uh, integer vectors usually will do because we know it's just bits. Uh, and there are not one way, but there is not one way, but there are lots of them. And of course, there are, they're grouped. They, you can just like, again, test it against your data and so on. And there are quite a few of them, variants here to play with. Um, and again, just, Test, test it on your data, see what's best for you. And the next part of this library is, or is sub, um, it's just part of bit ve vectors part actually, because uh, this is uh, support operations on these bit, ve bit vectors. Uh, there are two very important bit vectors in data structure, uh, structures um, operations. Uh, they call bit rank and bit select. Bit rank uh, is like um, generalization of pop count operation. Who knows what pop count is? Yeah, um, it's um, a way to count all the set bits in the array or in a byte. Uh, but uh, rank is generalization of it. It allows you to count all um, how much bits are set in part of the array, and it allows you to not just count ones, but zeros, one zeros, and uh, different things. Uh, and select is like a reverse operation. It shows you at which point uh, uh, rank changes. So you, if you know uh, the rank, you would like to find at which bit it, uh, it was set. You can find it via, with a select. Uh, this, those operations uh, are not free, but the cost in immutable uh, bit vectors is already paid, in, both in terms of memory and uh, time for building the array. But for bit vector, you have to construct it manually. Uh, well, here you have a few options. Well, um, there are two types uh, of mm, classes here. One is 
and they will work better on different kinds of data. Uh, and when you construct the object, you can just uh, call it to see the result. Uh, so, for, uh, again, you can do different benchmarks, see, uh, looking for better ways to, um, well, to fit your data. Uh, but rank and select can work not uh, with, uh, can only work in immutable vectors with uh, patterns of length one, it means with uh, ones on, on the zeros, but with a mutable bit vector we can have patterns of length two, it's one zero or one one, the total four of them. And of course you can have uh, different kinds of operations uh, built on top of that. Okay, another option for, for this is to create uh, inf bit vector interleaved classes. This allows you to uh, interleave information about select and rank data inside data, b between data parts. Uh, th in this case, it, will ha it's, it would be cheaper to create that such an array than a uh, usual array and two uh, supports. And, but still, you may want to try to see what's best for you and for your data. Okay, and the next part uh, is uh, wavelet trees. It's um, probably the most uh, large part in the library for now, but it's going to change in the future. Uh, so, wavelet trees is a tree um, that have bit vectors on the nodes, and it breaks this original sequence into these um, subparts. But actually, you don't have to know it to use the, li the library. And let me show for some examples. Here we can open a file. It's a readme file from the repo. And we can just extract first line. It's, well, more or less the same way you will do with uh, array, probably. Um, all, all possible uh, so Python features are available, but so. Uh, but then you can do something um, that you can't do in Python faster. You can, for example, count the number of lines, and it means find all the elements. In Python, you usually will have to like iterate over, do some map probably with or some filtering and sum and so on. And here we can you can have something that will work probably. Uh, three or four um, time, no, thousand times faster. Um, one more example is, uh, let's try to find uh, at which line f first uh, equal sign appears. So first we'll use select operation to find the symbol and then we have to find uh, how much slash n symbols were before it. Well, of course, uh, rank select uh, operations are a little bit, uh, have a little bit different meaning here, but it should be obvious. If it's not, just look at doc strings. They are here for, for your help. As I said, there are quite a few uh, wavelet trees available. There are two types of them. Ones are for bytes, and the other types are for integers. Probably uh, it would be better to split them into a race. Maybe it's going to happen. Um, but let me go to the last part. It's uh, compressed suffix arrays. Uh, suffi compressed suffix arrays are sorted arrays that contain all the suffixes of your data. Um, but again, actually, you don't have to know what they are to use them. For, they provide uh, three operations, uh, f well, much more, but you can use, for example, those three. Um, one of this, uh, them is extract, so you can uh, have a sequence. It shouldn't have con contain zeros, by the way, when you construct it. And you can uh, s extract original sequence out of that, out of the suffix tree. Then you can count elements. You can count one element or you can count patterns. It's no, no big difference. And you can find all the occurrences for some pattern. And all that happens really fast. Uh, there are not, no, not so much suffix arrays for now, but it's going to change, I think, because uh, suffix arrays that are based 
own wavelet trees or actually could have different wavelet trees uh, as a base. And there are more other parameters that could be uh, imported to the, exported to the Python in the future. Uh, so about the future, um, future, well, what I would like to see in the future from this library is more dynamic compilation, I think. Uh, for now, uh, when I work with uh, the library, I have to like add all the parameters somehow manually, and maybe use uh, Python, uh, C++ uh, um, features to multiply them with some different things, but still it's kind of limiting and time-consuming operation for, in terms of compilation. But uh, if we would had an option to just write every small snippet of C++ code, like run it through some magic uh, and got new module for Python that have this class with all the features uh, exported to Python, that would be great. Uh, well, there are lots of things that could be improved and maybe will be improved, but what will happen depends, and depends on you, uh, on your activity. I just posted this uh, library in the GitHub, and it was just uh, a few days ago, uh, while it has become public. Uh, I'll show the link one more time. For now, I'm the only one person in this uh, repo, so it would be great help for you if you join me there. In any way, uh, any kind of uh, mm, feature requests, let's say, would be uh, prioritized if you are contributing something. Uh, here's the link. I uh, thank you. Uh, that, I, now I think it's time for the questions. Thank you, Constantine. Uh, so, any questions? So, don't be shy. Please come here. Uh, I just was wondering whether uh, all these data structures have like some support for serialization and deserialization. So one, for example, could use them over the wires and over the network and reconstruct from there and so on. Um, it's not quite quite tested there, but should be um, there should be a pickle support. Okay, thank you. I have another question here. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I, I was just wondering if you'd benchmarked your library against things like NumPy and the um, various um, things kicking around in PyPy for um, you know, prefix and suffix arrays, because there are things like pack bits in NumPy for um, encoding bit arrays to byte arrays. Um, and there are various implementations of um, kind of dicyclic um, directed acyclic graphs, like kind of dog and gadag and things that are used by, um, you know, the kind of people doing genetics and word games and um, things existing. And they'll be wrapping C code already and breaking out the gill. So I was just wondering if you'd... Um, well, not quite, but uh, actually, um as, as it library is built on top of very benchmarked C++ library and most of the code is running like without changes, it should be pretty fast. But there are, uh, I know for sure there are some PyBind11 um, delays here, some, some contribution from PyBind11 that it's, may slow down some things, unfortunately. For example, uh, when you use uh, if you have limited use cases, of course you can use, for example, bit array module um, uh, that will probably do most of the things with just bit arrays. Uh, but if you like to um, construct some uh, unusual data structure, then probably this library is the only option you have. Because, um, well, those operations exported and um, the core of the library, if you would like to extend it, well, it's prior quite unique, I think. Uh, and, so, and for uh, NumPy, Bitpack, uh, I think they don't have uh, like this feature to pack to uh, three or less bits, but only for two bytes. So it's not quite the same thing. 
Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll check yours out. <laughs> so, any, any other questions? Okay, so once again, thank you.